Hey everyone, Dogen here. So my friend uh, Joey, the anime man, recently made a kind of Japanese Q&A, Japanese feedback video that he uh, posted on his YouTube channel. And on that video, there was a question about pitch that someone asked, and he mentioned my channel um, when answering that question. So I thought I'd just take this uh, opportunity to give kind of like a, a five minute brief introduction to Japanese pitch accent because I thought a, a few people might be coming over. This isn't scripted, but um, I've been teaching Japanese pitch accent for about three years now and uh, I've got a bunch of books over there. Uh, maybe I'll show you real quick. So th this is like half the books that I, I use when I make my pitch accent lessons. It's not, I'm not trying to brag or anything. I'm just kind of trying to show my credentials, but Anyway, here's a five minute introduction to Japanese pitch accent. So pitch accent means that the accent of a word is determined by its pitch rather than its stress. So what does this mean? So English is a stress accent language, and this means that a word's accent is determined by its stress. It's kind of force on a particular bit. So if I say tomorrow, then the ma part of that word is, it has a larger stress. It has more force than the surrounding bits. So it's a little bit louder and it's a little bit longer than the other bits. But the pitch is a little bit higher, but not significantly higher. It's the extra stress on that syllable that makes that the accent of that word. Whereas in uh, Japanese, if we have a word like sekai, uh, which means the world, it's not that there's stress on that initial accent, it's that there's a higher pitch on that accent. So it's sekai, sekai, high, low, low. So the easiest way to think about this is that some languages have strong and weak bits, that would be English, whereas Japanese has high and low bits. So stress accent languages and uh, pitch accent languages. Japanese is a pitch accent language. If a word has an accent, then that, that word's accent is determined by a change in pitch. So that's a basic introduction to what a pitch accent language is. So now I'm gonna give a real brief introduction to the four different Japanese pitch accent patterns. There are four. So the first one is called atamadaka, and it means that the first syllable, it's actually called a mora, but think of, it's okay to think about it as a syllable for the purpose of this lesson. The first syllable of the word is high, and then all the remaining syllables are low, including the particle that attaches. So if we go back to the uh, example word, sekai, high, low, low, and then the particle also attaches low. So sekai wa, sekai wa, or sekai ga, high, low, low particle low. That's atamadaka. Most native English speakers don't have any trouble with this particular pattern. The next pattern is called the nakadaka pattern, and in this pattern the pitch starts low, goes high, and then goes down again within the word. So the word for Japan is an example of this. It starts low, goes high, and goes back down again. Nihon, 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 and then the particle again attaches low. Nihon wa, nihon wa. So, sekai wa versus nihon wa. That's uh, pitch accent pattern number two, nakadaka. Middle, the pitch goes up and then down within the word. The, both of those, uh, again, native English speakers usually don't have any trouble with those two patterns, but this, uh, the remaining two are where things get a little bit tricky. So the next pattern is called the odaka pattern. And with this pattern, the accent falls at the end of the word. This means that the pitch starts low, goes up, and then stays up until the last syllable of the word, but then the particle attaches low. So an example of this would be the word little brother. So this is pronounced as ototo, and that probably sounded kind of relatively flat to you because the initial rise in pitch isn't that dramatic in Japanese. It's the drop that's real dramatic. So again, oto oto. But then the particle attaches low. So it goes from high to low. Oto oto ga. To ga. Oto oto ga. Native English speakers have the tendency to try and put the accent within the word because that's what happens in English typically, whereas in Japanese, like with the word ototo, 
the accent comes at the end of the word. So most native English speakers will say ototo rather than ototo, ototo rather than ototo, ototo rather than ototo. And the thing to keep in mind here again is that the pitch stays high until the end of the word and then it drops. Toga, ototoga, ototoga, ototoga. Not ototoga. That's wrong. It's not ototoga. It's ototoga. So again, that the drop in pitch is from to to the following particle. The particle attaches low. The third pattern again is odaka. Pitch starts low, rises just a tiny bit. Although because pitch is indicated with a binary system, this looks like the same distance as this, but it's actually not. <laughs> Forgive the intricacies. I explain this in more detail in my series, but starts low, goes high, stays high until the end of the word, and then drops. Ototoga. Okay, so that's the third pitch accent pattern. And the final one is called the hebang pattern. In this pattern, the pitch starts low, rises, and stays high through the particle. So this means that there's no drop in pitch and thus any word that has this accent pattern is accentless because there's no drop in pitch. So an example of this word would be if we say the word for the United States in Japanese, it's America, America. So it starts low, goes high and stays high. And then again, the particle attaches high as in America. Ga. Or another example would be, um, for example, uh, the word for the best, saiko. Again, a lot of uh, native English speakers have the tendency to say things like saiko with the accent at the beginning, but this is wrong. It's saiko. So if you put uh, a particle at the end, it would be like saiko ni. Saiko ni. Again, the particle attaches high. There's no drop in pitch. So saiko ni, saite na, uh, gakko ga, gakuse ga. All of these are examples of the final hebang pattern. And uh, hebang in Japanese means flat. There's a slight rise in pitch again, so it's not actually flat, but it's much better to think of hebang words as close to flat as opposed to all the other patterns that we've covered thus far. So this one particular pattern of words in Japanese is relatively flat. And that's one of the reasons that Japanese teachers often say Japanese is flat, because native English speakers often screw up these words completely. But all of these other patterns that we talked about earlier, they do have drops in pitch and thus pitch accents. So brief, uh, summary of this lesson because I want to keep things concise. Uh, Japanese is a pitch accent language. It has high and low bits as opposed to strong and weak bits. And there are four Japanese pitch accent patterns. There is atomodaka as in sekai wa. There is nakadaka as in nihon wa. There is uh, otaka as in ototo ga. And there is hebang as in amerika ga or gakusei ga or gakko ga. So those are the four main pitch accent patterns. Um, hopefully this was useful to some of you. I talk about all this in detail in my, my Patreon series and I, I talk about like what kinds of words uh, typically fall into which category of pitch accent. So one basic example is like wor uh, verbs that end with bu tend to be hebang. So like yobu or tobu. These they're, they're, these words are not yobu and not tobu, but again, yobu, tobu. So verbs that end with bu tend to fall into this category. That's one of the many, 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 many rules that uh, are talked about in books like this and that I, I teach in my uh, Patreon series. So if you're interested in learning mo more about Japanese pitch accent, maybe consider uh, checking that out. If not, it's totally fine too. Um, and if anyone's new checking out the channel, thanks for stopping by. Uh, really appreciate it. Thanks to Joy for the shout out and I'll talk to you guys all again soon. Bye.